Yo, control freaks, what's up? In this video today, I'm going to show you how you can take long action lists, put them into a file and use them from anywhere. This video is about macros. My name is Schlappe and let's talk about CliffX Pro. First of all, what is a macro? Think of a macro as action list organized in presets. This is really helpful if you have a lot of them and you use them regularly and the action lists are fairly long. I've seen people having long text documents with all their favorite action lists and copy and pasting them back and forth in X clips, but I find that not ideal. It's hard to organize, it's hard to stay on top of things, and if something goes wrong, it's really hard to see what goes wrong where. So we have a really elegant solution in CliffX Pro, and that is macros. I'll give you an example. Let's dive right in, shall we? So when I work on a CliffX Pro set um, and I want to try out a new action, this is what I usually do. I create a new MIDI clip, go down in the settings, change the quantize to none, so it will uh, be triggered um, the moment I press the button, the play button, um, I turn off the loop and I'll make it really short. So it's just like, yeah, flickering and doing the action. And then I go in there and type in the action. Something like really stupid message, hello. Okay, so that's quite a few steps. And if you do this over and over again, that's really boring, annoying. And most of the time I forget this and it's it's messy. So. That's something which uh, CliffX Pro is really perfect. Taking um, the boring stuff and put it in just like tiny bits and that can really speed up your workflow. So what I did, I used this uh, an action list to do this and put it in a macro. So or what you could do is exactly that. Open up, um, I paste the action list here, I've prepared and yeah, as you can see, I, you have to wait until it's it's going to be uh, executed. So, but when I do it here, it gets triggered instantly. So we take this action list, and then to make it a macro, we have to go into the text file uh, in your home folder, CliffX Pro Macros.txt. We open that up a couple of instructions. Now we have to give the baby a name. So, and to make it a macro, the name has to be to start with a dollar sign and end in with a dollar sign with no spaces in between. But what you could do if you have a longer word, uh, like more a sentence um, to describe what your macro is actually doing, you can use hyphens or underscores. I'm going to use hyphens and I'm going to call this clip new CXP clip dollar sign equals, and then I paste my action list. This is not well readable. Um, and a good thing in uh, CliffX with macros is you can use new lines for each command or for multiple commands to group and structure longer action lists in a way that you can just read them through uh, like a list. So the only thing you have to make sure that the new line starts with a space. So I, I did that before. So here we go, it's the same action list, um, clearly structured. And I think this is a way where you can really easily see what's going on. Now that is now our macro file. We go into our Ableton set and we are going to use the macro new CXP clip dollar sign, trigger that, boom. And of course you can trigger that now from the X clip or uh, in this case, I assigned this uh, this X control to trigger that macro, or you could use it from the command line. New CXP clip, bam. That's really convenient, isn't it? Another great thing is you can use aliases. So you can, um, do a pointer uh, with a different name, triggering the same macro. For example, um, I want the same macro triggered just with the abbreviation of the macro name NCC. And then what you do is um, the new macro name 
and then equals new CXP clip. And you're good to go. Save. And another great thing is if you change something for the changes to take effect, you can use the reInit action. And this will reload macros and variables txt file. So when I type in now ncc, uh, nothing will happen because there is no free slot. Let me put this quickly. That doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Ah. There we go. <laughs> there was white space in the beginning, and you can't define a macro within a macro. So once again, we'll talk reInit, and then ncc. Now it works. See? So that was a live demonstration. Um, I made a mistake, um, had a look back, changed it, saved it, and I didn't have to reload the set. And in this case, it was an empty set, but if you have a huge set, it can take really a long time. So it's a good way to enhance your workflow. Another thing about the aliases, what is important, um, the original macro has to be already be defined. So when you put up this line up here, it won't work. So make sure if you make a pointer um, that the definition of the actual macro is before. All right? But there's one more thing. You can combine variables and macros, and you get a really flexible setup. Um, if you haven't seen my tutorial about variables, click here, um, and it will give you an idea how powerful variables can be. And you can combine them. So let me give you an example. I have a macro here, which will record two bars um, in the first clip slot of base. Um, and all right, now what if I want to record drums? Of course, I could copy um, the macro and um, find and replace all this, um, the, the track um, indication. But we can use a variable. And let's use a variable called rec track. All right. So the macro is called rec 2b. I'll set the variable to base. And now let's see, it records two, two bars of base. Now let's set the variable to drums. I do the same for the drums. One macro for an infinite number of tracks. The same goes for keys. Easy, isn't it? All right, but there is one pitfall. There is a known bug, and Stray confirmed it. If you are combining a variable with a macro to be, this actually won't work. See, this, even worse, will break your macro. Your macro won't work anymore. There's an easy fix if you um, substitute the semicolon with a um, simple column. Um, it will trigger the first, the, the first part of the action list and the second part when the clip stops. So the bug is only appearing if it's in the same action list. If they are in two different action lists, it'll all be fine. I'm going to reinitialize, and the macros will start working again. So as you can see, this again will work. So I'll do the same here. Rec to B. Now this should give me two bars recording in drums. So unfortunately, in a macro, you can't define a variable. Uh, but there are certain circumstances where you really want to do that. For example, in X modes, you use macros to define different layers of control on your launch pad. And maybe in different, in a certain X mode, you want to use a button to define a variable. That was my case. So that brought me into user actions, and that was the first user action I wrote, how to define a variable from inside a macro. And it works, reliable, and reliably reliable, reliable. That was it for the video today. There will be a bonus video for my Patreons where I explain my user actions to define the variable, as well as a 
brand new user action I wrote where you can store the name or the index of the currently selected track into a variable and use that for a macro where you want to record or to be really flexible about that. And also I had a different approach how to tackle the problem of using a variable and a macro in the same action list. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Please like and subscribe. I hope you've liked it. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and always stay in control. Ciao.